He's pretty well always that way anyway. Another well hit ball. Blouser couldn't get that one. Lloyd McClendon has the first hit of the ball game. A single to center field with one out in the second. Looks like a fastball away, and this ball hammered past the diving Blouser. So Lloyd McClendon with the first hit of the ball game, his first at bat. A guy who really uh, deserves a star for perseverance signing mm -hmm. with the Mets going to the Cubs over to the Pirates and always has done a good job filling in. Well, of years and mm -hmm. if they went down he would get some of the blame but if they went up he wouldn't get much of the credit. McClendon into the gap this should score bonds it will. The Pirates are on the board and Steve Avery's consecutive scoreless inning streak in league championship series play is over. It goes into the books at 22 and a third innings. And uh, Bill Walsh's Stanford team beating them this past weekend. Leaned with a hit. Beyond the reach of Gant. Here come the Pirates trying to get right back into this one. Leaned a third as two runs score and all of a sudden it's eight to three. As Ted Simmons said, don't write off the Pirates just yet. And McClendon walks. The first thrown by Glavin, a one-out base runner for the Pirates in the second. King in scoring position for McClendon. That's well hit toward the left field corner. Gant on the run, can't get it. Here comes King on to score. McClendon has a double and Pittsburgh has a 4 nothing lead. They are hitting rockets off Steve Avery here in the first inning. Batters then they're vulnerable become vulnerable to left handed pitching later in the game. Bonds tags. Nixon the catch. His throw will come to second, and the Pirates take a 5 0 lead. That's the second RBI of the night for Lloyd McClendon, his third of the series. And it's the first run charge to Pete Smith. Jeff King at first now with one out. Remember, if Pittsburgh wins this game tonight, there is an off day tomorrow, and that means. Facing Charlie Lee Brand, who came on last inning and worked a perfect one, two, three, fifth. McClendon, slot and lean. Better six, seven, and eight coming up. The bullpen continues in motion for the Pirates. And McClendon is on again. Two for two is Lloyd McClendon and a whale of a view and they wrote this for us comes to us from Airship Shamu. The blimp represents SeaWorld parks in Florida California Ohio and Texas. The Airship Shamu. What is already a big night. Two for two. With a sacrifice fly and two runs batted in. Lemke. Might not have had him had he been able to grip the ball. But it became a moot point anyway when the ball slipped out of his hand. And that's a hit. Well, you struggle all series to get a hit, <laughs> and they start to come like they have tonight for the Pirates. I think uh, Mark Lemke, in fairness to him on this play, he had to get rid of it quickly. He tries to glove it. He really didn't have hold of the ball. Little looper that will fall in right field. King continues toward third. Justice with the throw. It's cut off. And the Pirates have first and third with nobody out. Already leading one to nothing. If you're the first base coach, you would hug a hitter because that was terrific hitting by Lloyd McClendon. Two strikes on him, protecting the outside part of the plate. Watch where this pitch is. Well, oh, that's fine piece of hitting by Lloyd McClendon. 
When a hitter is ahead in the count, he goes to the offense. When he's behind in the count, especially with two strikes, you protect the outside part of the plate. And McClendon, the batter is Don Slott, who homered off Glavin in game three. That's well hit toward the gap in right center and in for extra bases. King has scored. McClendon being waved in even with nobody out. Lemke's throw, not in time. Barry Hill couldn't get him. And McClendon scores to make it three to nothing. The 12th batter of the inning is Lloyd McClendon. Base hit. Eight hits in the inning. The throw to third from Justice, not in time. Back to first, now they have McClendon caught. And they almost botched this play. They haven't fully yet. They have Bonds trapped. Pendleton flips to Bream. Bonds bowls him over, but Bream held the ball. And the inning comes to an end. But what an inning it was. A record eight runs for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And after an inning and a half, they lead 8-0. Any runs. And that's ball four. <laughs> Shouldn't be that hard a name for you to remember. There's a base hit. Lean down into the corner with it. That will score at least one. Now Gant stumbles on the track. Slot is being waved in. The relay throw, not in time. It's 10 to 1, Pittsburgh. Chico leaned, ends an 0-8 drought with a double into the left field. So that's five hits in his last five official at-bats. Bidding for an extra base hit here with Nixon back at the track, and that one is gone. Six hits in his last six official at-bats for Lloyd McClendon. The home run, his first of the league championship series. And it's 13-1. And once again against a right-handed pitcher. Does that influence Jim Leland's thinking tomorrow night? If it goes to game seven and the Pirates lead by 12. In terms of a consecutive hit streak in league championship series play, even though McClendon has six hits in his last six official at-bats, in terms of a streak, it only counts as five consecutive hits because a sacrifice fly terminates a consecutive hit streak. Yeah, a walk doesn't, but a sack fly does. That's right. So now he has tied the league championship series record for consecutive hits with five, even though officially he's six for his last six. Our Gary Varsho, both left-handed hitters. Espy, a, a switch hitter, of course. But with Jay Bell, you may bring the right-hander in, and Bell has to stay in the ball game because he's the regular shortstop. Bobby Cox is going to make a pitching change with Jay Bell coming up. Pete Smith will come in. The 3-0 is outside. He walked him on four straight. 